the children and grandchildren of deposed King Constantine II of Greece have wealth, beauty, fame, and are considered the most glamorous of European royalty. But they don't have a kingdom yet. There was no official mourning, no gun salute, no slow march through the ancient streets of Athens. But when the coffin of King Constantine II of Greece arrived at the city's Metropolitan Cathedral on January 16, 2023, it was with a large crowd and an extraordinary spectacle. Display of royal solidarity. Under the magnificent Byzantine dome of the cathedral stood an impressive array of crowned persons from all over the world, including three kings, six queens, an empress, a czar, numerous crown princes and princesses, and a grand duke. All had come from their various domains to honor the long deposed and exiled monarch now disparagingly referred to by Greek authorities as Mr. Constantine Glucksberg. The incense and prayer chants filled the air and warm tributes were paid, but it was the closing speech by the late king's heir apparent, Crown Prince Paul, 56, that made the nation watching on live television sit up straight, my dear father, he said, there stated, this is not the end. It would be tempting to say that the Greek royal family now rules nothing more than the covers of glossy magazines. The Prince of Greece, his mega-rich heiress wife Princess Maria Chantal, and their five photogenic children are familiar sights at fashionable resorts in the Mediterranean, the Caribbean, and the Alps. Their stately homes in London, New York, the English countryside and the Bahamas are considered a testament to their taste and sophistication. Yet wealth and glamour do not necessarily compensate for the loss of kingship, and loyal Greek royalists say Pavlos and his privileged relatives are secretly seeking something more. Today, with the old royal family scattered, only Constantine's stalwart widow, Queen Anne Marie, younger sister of Queen Margaret of Denmark, remains in Greece occupying a modest apartment in Athens. But after exactly 50 years of the Republic, there is a change of heart in Greece. Constantine's death has not only brought royalist flags and anthems back to the streets, but has also forced a softening of the official stance against any kind of reconciliation with the monarchy. After initially announcing that the king would be buried as a private person, without state recognition, Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotak down in the face of criticism and sent his deputy to the funeral. Then, in early March, the Greek prince dropped another bombshell. He revealed that he and Marie Chantal were looking for a permanent home in Greece, and in an interview with a French magazine added, We want to be more visible to the Greek people. They will see us much more often in the future. Could it be that the tall prince with the beard and beard has offered his former subjects some subtle suggestion? If so, despite all the whirlwind of positive sentiment surrounding the funeral, he would face huge obstacles. Pavlos was just seven months old when his father was forced into exile by the military junta that seized power in Greece. In a failed attempt to restore democracy, Constantine launched a counter coup that was quickly crushed and in late 1967, vengeful colonels ousted him from the country. The royal family fled first to Rome, then to London, where Constantine and his wife, Queen Anne Marie, were welcomed by Queen Elizabeth and her Greek-born husband, Prince Philip. England would remain their home for the next 47 years. Perhaps unfairly, many Greeks blamed the young inexperienced king, then ruling for only three years for failing to stand up to the junta at all. And in 1973, after a unilateral referendum, the monarchy was abolished. All property of the royal family, including the historic Tata Palace in the hills near Athens, was confiscated and its titles revoked. In what was seen as deliberate neglect, Constantine and his family were officially given the name Glo a reference to the castle owned by the Danish branch of the family dot backed by a group of wealthy Greek supporters, Constantine, Anne-Marie, and their family lived a noble life in London, 
rotating among the cream of high society and becoming especially close to the present King Charles and his then-wife Diana, Princess of Wales. Yet his heart yearned for Greece, and the little Prince of Greece was raised with the idea that the old country was his destiny. Further humiliation fell upon the former king. In 1993, he was stripped of his citizenship, his passport was revoked, and during a holiday cruise on Greek waters, his yacht was harassed by naval ships and military aircraft. Now the stateless king has refused to retaliate. His friend, shipping heir and writer Taki Theodorakoulos, remembers Constantine forbidding him to criticize the regime on behalf of the royal family. He never complained and never blamed his enemies, Taki says. It wasn't until a decade ago that Constantine and Anne-Marie were finally allowed to return home. They moved to a large seaside villa on the Argolita Peninsula, two hours from Athens, in an area known as the Greek Hamptons, but they had to agree to keep a low profile and refrain from engaging in political activities. While his father was alive, Pavlos also felt constrained from doing anything that sensitive Greek authorities might consider provocative. Educated at a private Greek school founded by his father in London, Pavlos later enrolled at Sandhurst, an elite British military training college, and rose to the rank of lieutenant in the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards. In 1995, after retiring from the army, the Prince of Greece married Marie Chantel Miller, the vivacious daughter of an Anglo-American business tycoon. It was the social wedding of the year, attended by a virtual representative of European royalty. Pavlos later joked to Charles that his marriage to Marie Chantal was attended by more members of the royal family than Charles' wedding to Diana at St. Paul's Cathedral. Today, the couple and their children divide their time between New York, where Pavlos works as an investment banker in London, where 54-year-old Marie Chantal's luxury children's clothing business is based. Marie Provost, a correspondent for French magazine Point de Vue, which specializes in royal reporting, says, they are by far the most glamorous royal family in Europe, plus they are very friendly, hardworking, and quite nice. The family's strength is undoubtedly Marie Chantal, whose billionaire father Bob Warren owns a global chain of duty-free stores. Growing up in Hong Kong, the center of Bob's business empire, she was sent to schools in London, Paris, and Switzerland before attending university in New York, where she swirled in bohemian circles, working one time for pop artist Andy Warhol in his notorious factory. It was in New York that the blonde, looking like a waifish factory girl, met the straight-laced, tough-talking Pavlos, who had just returned from the army. They were set up on a blind date by a Greek friend of the princes who had a hunch that, despite their obvious differences, they might find common ground. They did. We just hit it off, Marie Chantal later said. It was love at first sight. I knew he would be the man I would marry. They stayed in New York for a while, then moved to London in 2002, and Pavlos was obviously keen that their three children should now have a European education. Their new home, a magnificent two-story mansion on Chain Walk Walk in Chelsea, on the banks of the Thames, quickly became and remains a center of social activity. A country estate in the Cotswolds, near King Charles Highgrove Estate, and a hunting lodge in Yorkshire were soon added to the couple's UK real estate portfolio. The couple could afford it. According to the Sunday Times of London's annual list of wealthy people, Marie Chantal alone has a fortune of 4.3 billion Australian dollars. Not that she has a penchant for joining the idle rich. For the past 20 years, the princess has run her own Marie Chantal exclusive children's clothing business and flagship store in London's Belgravia neighborhood. She designs many of the garments herself which are often seen on the pampered younger members of the European aristocracy, dot my brand is like my sixth child. Marie Chantal revealed, I was a young mother pregnant with my third child when I had it and I wanted to work. 
I'm very creative. I love to paint, and I wanted to do something in the luxury world or retail, because that's what I was introduced to through my father's business. The couple's three older children are actively making their way on the public stage, led by daughter, 27-year-old Marie Olympia, goddaughter of King Charles. British socialite magazine Tatler calls her London's undisputed at girl. And while her modeling career has yet to reach stellar heights, she is valued in the fashion world as a spokesperson for brands such as Dior, Miu Miu, and Louis Vuitton. She is life and soul, says celebrity photographer Herman Larkin. She has that sleek and stylish look that every photographer loves. The eldest son, Constantine Alexios, 24, known to his friends as Tino and described by royal writer Hilary Rose as a young blonde Greek god, has inherited his mother's artistic inclinations and is said to be pursuing a career as a painter, sculptor. At least when he's not pursuing the upper-class girls who flock every summer to the fashionable Greek islands of Mykonos and Patmos, where vacationing royalty like to anchor their yachts. Tino is currently dating socialite model Poppy Delaving, 36, who split from her businessman husband James Cook last year. There's also furry heartthrob Prince Achilles Andreas, 23, an aspiring actor known by his stage name Icky Miller, who has already appeared on American daytime soap operas. A recent graduate of Manhattan University, Icky accompanies heiress Natalie Massenet daughter of her mother's best friend, Isabella Massenet, founder of the fashion company Netta Porter. Two younger sons, Odysseus Kaiman and 15-year-old Aristides Stavros, are both students dot like a royal family with everything but a kingdom. The golden Greeks are taking a wait and see approach, reconnecting with their lost homeland and not expecting, at least in the short term, too much. I don't think a full return is likely, says Andreas Magos, editor of a popular Greek website devoted to the royal family. Too much time has passed, and most people can't even remember when we had a monarchy. But those old wounds are healing, and there is a lot of respect and goodwill for Pavlos. We saw that on the streets. I think he could definitely play a role here. Similarly, the Prince of Greece insists he's not seeking to reclaim his throne. I'm not looking for anything, he said. Our role is to be good people and do what we can to help the country. Yet signs of reconciliation are everywhere. Despite political sensitivities, the ruling New Democracy Party has a substantial monarchist wing, and some of its leading figures are on good terms with members of the royal family, Polls still show a clear majority of voters favor remaining a republic, but the gap has narrowed in recent years, and as Greece struggles with chronic economic and social problems, many seem open to the idea of a new constitutional model. Queen Anne Marie, a prominent figure at her husband's funeral, has proven to be a model of dignity and prudence, and many consider her the mother of the nation. Exile comes from the Greek word for flight and in ancient times was a common punishment for leaders who were thought to have failed the people. The good news was that it lasted only ten years before it was wiped out. Constantine's exile had lasted long enough to pay off the debts of five generations, and it probably wouldn't take long for his successors to recover. <laughs>